Hello everybody, I hope you're all well. So for today's video I'm going to be taking a sort of deep dive into aesthetic culture on YouTube and aesthetic YouTubers. I didn't know what else to call them so that's what I'm going to be referring to them as in this video. You guys are probably wondering, Jordan, what's an aesthetic YouTuber? What the fuck are you talking about, hon? The only way I can sort of define an aesthetic YouTuber is they sort of fit like a certain criteria them being aesthetically pleasing and having an aesthetic is a very big part of their brand let's talk about the criteria often number one very fashionable or they definitely fit into a certain fashion aesthetic they often do a lot of lookbooks a lot of hauls they post a lot of outfits on their instagram rarely repeat outfits and also they get sent a lot of clothes for free get sponsored by a lot of clothing companies so they can like put out so much fashion content they often also fit western beauty standards they're usually white slim very pretty they're probably youtubers and influencers full-time and they probably live sort of a fairly glamorous life and what i mean by glamorous life is you know they have a lot of friends they go to a lot of festivals go on very like luxurious holidays quite a lot and when it comes to their content their content is usually very good like the editing is top notch everything about their content is perfect it looks good it is good it's edited well and the type of content they do is they do you know hauls lookbooks chatty videos maybe throw in a makeup video every now and again they often do vlogs as well and these vlogs are often shot and edited to absolute perfection and some of them would even do like after movies of like when they went to festivals or holidays which was again a part of their content which i really really admired when i did watch these youtubers my main example for aesthetic youtubers is mainly mika francis and cartier milan i watched their videos religiously for years and then there are other youtubers who i didn't watch that much but could definitely fit this mold you know people like simply kenna okay sage before she went super religious and maybe even devon and sydney carlson could fit into this sort of realm of like aesthetic youtubers now this video for me is going to be slightly different just because i'm not particularly criticizing anyone i do want to make it clear i feel like when you become a commentary youtuber a scene as someone that's just constantly criticizing people which isn't really what i'm trying to do what i'm trying to do is just take really deep dives into certain topics and pick them apart a little bit i'm not particularly criticizing anyone in this video i do make a few critiques which obviously you will see in a minute i'm more just sort of picking apart this subject and the sort of pros and the cons kind of thing and the reason i do want to explore this topic is because I find it so interesting for one and also it was a very big part of my life when I was growing up. When I was growing up and consuming this content, I was really consuming this content between the ages of 16 and 20. Four years of watching these videos nearly every day, it really did shape me as a person and it became a huge part of my life so that's why I do want to take quite a deep dive into it and a lot of you guys requested this as well and I do want to add that the sort of subjects that I'm talking about and the conclusions that I almost come to even though I don't really come to any particular conclusion things that I bring up basically it can be applied to any youtuber um the reason I'm just sort of talking about aesthetic youtubers is because well, like I said it was such a big part of my life a lot of people love to follow Kylie Jenner on Instagram and the Kardashians and be really you know invested in that Kardashian lifestyle the fashion the makeup the glamorous lifestyle the holidays some other people people's sort of aesthetic obsession was the Kardashians whilst mine was people like Cartier Milan and Mika Francis you know so I am going to be mentioning stuff like the lack of diversity feeling like you're not cool enough comparing yourself and of course I'm applying it to the youtubers that I watched when I was younger but you can apply it to really anyone that you follow on social media now just before I do get into this video don't forget to subscribe as you all know everyone seems to be quarantining at the moment so as i have i have two weeks off work but i'm most likely gonna have a lot 
more depending on sort of what's going on with the whole situation at the moment so i will be trying to upload twice a week for you guys wednesdays and sundays just so not only i can keep myself busy and get some sort of money rolling through i also want to sort of try and keep you guys entertained because i think we're all going a little bit stir crazy i do want to add that i hope everyone's staying safe i don't really know what else to say apart from that i'm not going to try and add some really super deep message in here um just you know stay safe and look after yourself also don't forget to follow my instagram <laughs> because i'm very active on there and i'm going to be very active a lot now because obviously there's not really that much to do because i'm going from once a week to twice a week i need double the ideas so leave a comment if you can think of a video idea or dm me on instagram so sort of elaborating from my intro where i talked about sort of the criteria that you need to fit to sort of become an aesthetic youtuber one thing which i find really really interesting is sort of the shared interests between a lot of aesthetic youtubers and sort of the common interest they all seem to have is sort of spirituality crystal healing the law of attraction and manifestation some of them with buddhism now of course not all aesthetic youtubers are into you know crystal healing and manifestation and the law of attraction but a lot of them are which is something that i find so interesting because you know stuff like crystal healing and law of attraction and spirituality it is slightly niche and of course i'm not saying that spirituality is super super niche i know that millions if not billions of people across the world are very invested in spirituality crystal healing etc i only know a very very small handful of people in my personal life that are very into spirituality and crystal healing so i just find it very interesting that a lot of these sort of youtubers who are in the same genre happen to have all the same interests and I don't think there is anything wrong with having these interests. A couple of years ago, I was very much into crystal healing. I had very, very bad anxiety. I didn't leave the house for like three weeks. Having some anti-anxiety crystals really, really helped me through. You know, I used to meditate every night. I used to go out with the crystals. I couldn't even get into a car without having at least two crystals with me. So I definitely don't think there's anything wrong with having these interests. You know, I do just want to know, does this correlation exist because all of these youtubers that are in the same genre all watch each other and end up having the same interests or on the other hand are people sort of sharing these interests of spirituality buddhism do they all share these interests because they fit their aesthetic you know because we can't lie you know stuff like spirituality crystal healing etc you know they're very aesthetically pleasing interests as weird as it is to say and i'm definitely not accusing these youtubers of not having an interest at all in spirituality i watched a few of their videos and you can tell that a lot of them are extremely passionate about spirituality and crystal healing etc i just think it's something interesting to think about maybe some of their subscribers have gotten into spirituality because it sort of matches their aesthetic or maybe some people initially took an interest in spirituality because it matched their aesthetic and then ended up becoming extremely passionate about it the more they researched and read into it. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about Simply Kenna because I feel like she is a very good example of someone whose interests seemed to be slightly driven by her aesthetic she's deleted a lot of her old videos so you guys are probably just gonna have to take my word for it i mean i'm not lying i literally have no reason to lie but i'm sure there are plenty of drama and tea videos about this situation because it was very controversial at the time if you guys don't know who simply kenna is she's a youtuber who i think has around 800,000 subscribers now she has landed herself in a lot of controversy but she did become extremely popular because of her aesthetic her videos were always extremely well edited they were always sort of the same style which is very pleasing to look at now i'm not going to be discussing all of her controversies today but the one thing i will be discussing was her interest in buddhism and i'm putting this in extremely simple terms Buddhism is, you know, seen as a very beautiful religion. And don't get me wrong, I do believe that a lot of religions have extremely beautiful aspects. I mean, cathedrals, wow. 
they look great. The symbolism within Buddhism, the statues, all of it is extremely beautiful. Now I feel like I'm making a bit of a bold statement here but this is sort of what I've noticed sort of on social media and growing up is that Buddhism seems to be one of the most popular non-Abrahamic religions amongst Caucasian people. You rarely meet a white Sikh or a white Hindu but you'll meet quite a lot of white Buddhists in your life and a lot of people in Western society do have the belief that Buddhism is a lot more of a relaxed religion than a lot of other religions which some people find very appealing I think within you know Christianity the whole heaven and hell stuff is very intimidating to a lot of people and I'm not gonna get into it because I don't have loads of time but if you guys want to research more into Buddhism there are plenty of very educational videos on YouTube to watch about it Buddhism is one of the oldest religions in the world and it is the fourth largest in the world and it encompasses many beliefs, traditions and spiritual practices. You can interpret Buddhism in a lot of ways. There is no heaven and hell in Buddhism which I think is very appealing to a lot of people because it's quite comforting. There is just rebirth but rebirth is still considered you know unsatisfactory and painful. The end goal with Buddhism is you want to break out of that cycle of rebirth and reach enlightenment. Now I think what Simply Kenna did is she definitely oversimplified Buddhism she basically said in a video if you want to become a Buddhist just be a Buddhist and it's a little bit more than that I think. So not only did she oversimplify Buddhism she also had a lot of Buddha heads as sort of decoration in her apartment but if you guys didn't know Buddha heads are extremely offensive to a lot of Buddhists. They're extremely offensive like literally Buddha heads are just like a mm, no no go don't do that and it's very common knowledge within Buddhism that Buddha heads are very very disrespectful and I just think like if you become a Buddhist wouldn't you know that Buddha heads are disrespectful? I just think you know using a whole ass religion to match your aesthetic is like a little bit distasteful. I would genuinely love to know you guys thoughts on this whether you guys think I'm being too harsh or not. Now I want to talk about the sort of fashion side of aesthetic youtubers and this can definitely be applied to any social media influencer. Like I said before, I'm just talking about aesthetic YouTubers because it was such a big part of my life growing up and it was like a majority of the content I consumed for like four fucking years. I just think at the moment, fashion and social media is like a proper like cesspool for consumerism. I wore this top in a, I think about five videos ago and I'm so conscious of someone being like, are you wearing the same top? But like, it's okay to rewear clothes. Like, why am I thinking like this? On a lot of these YouTubers channels, their fashion sense and their style is a huge part of their brand and who they are. Especially someone like Mika Francis, who literally now her job is to be an Instagram fashion influencer. I mean, this applies for every social media influencer. Please can we start normalizing outfit repeating so I'm fed up with feeling self-conscious for wearing the same top that I wore five videos ago and it just seems like influencers never repeat outfits nowadays and I do wish there was more of a stress on capsule wardrobes and re-wearing garments in different ways because not only is it going to make your audience feel a lot better it's also going to stop so many people from contributing to the excessive consumerism within fashion and I think one thing which is really important to take note on is the lack of diversity with in aesthetic YouTubers. And I think just within YouTube in general, there seems to be such a lack of diversity. And these aesthetic YouTubers lived very aspirational and very privileged lives, you know? They had loads of friends, they always had events to go to, they had festivals to go to, they went on holiday and they would always vlog it and their vlogs would just look so beautiful and amazing and their life looked so good. And I think I always found these vlogs so entertaining was because they had so much to do because they had such good lives and of course I know their lives aren't all just events holidays and festivals and seeing their friends as a youtuber myself I know the hard work that goes into making youtube videos but something that I remember very vividly and I'm not sure if the video is still up because she's taken so many of her videos down but Mika Francis uploaded a Ibiza after movie of when she went on like I think it was an all expenses like brand trip and she put this monologue over in the beginning where it was basically like we shouldn't be focusing on material goods we should be like living in the moment <laughs> it kind of made me roll my eyes a bit she was overlaying that monologue about not focusing on material goods or money over an all expenses paid for trip to 
Ibiza. I do feel like I cannot talk about Mika Francis without talking about the blackfishing. So I'm going to touch on it very lightly. I did say that I don't want to make a whole video about blackfishing because I do feel like I am not the right person to do it. I don't want to be talking over any black men or women who are far more affected by the issue than I am. I don't want to be talking over anyone. So a very good video about blackfishing is actually Kim from For Harriet did an amazing video about blackfishing. So I definitely recommend it. I'll link it down below. I supported Mika for years. I think I watched her from age 16 to 20. I even bought some of her merch. Like I loved her. You know, she literally inspired me to like bleach my hair, branch out with my style. And there was quite a bit of controversy around her. I finally, after a while, decided to fully educate myself on the topic of blackfishing because I don't think I quite understood it. And after educating myself on blackfishing and sort of exploring the blackfishing debate, I finally realized that I could couldn't support someone who was benefiting from looking racially ambiguous and possibly and probably taking opportunities from women of colour and especially black women. I know a lot of people are going to be leaving comments saying, you know, Jordan, you're white, you shouldn't have a problem with this, this isn't your problem to have. If you go on Twitter and any social media platform really, a lot of black women have a problem with it and we can't just ignore that. I wanted to sort of briefly mention this video. I know I went on a little bit of a tangent, but I could not talk about her without addressing that and without addressing my support for her for such a long time and not taking responsibility for that. Anyways, back onto the I Be Far After movie monologue situation. It all just came across as a little bit fake deep and then it sort of made me realise, oh my god, is all is a lot of aesthetic YouTube fake deep? Is it just materialistic? Because I feel like you can't create these beautiful aesthetically pleasing vlogs without having a really privileged life. And it did make me contemplate, did she insert that monologue into the vlog because she was believing what it said and agreeing with everything in it or did she insert it because it just made the video look more aesthetically pleasing? And there's nothing wrong with preaching, you know, living in the moment and not focusing on material goods, but I definitely think you need to recognise and acknowledge your privilege. And let me know what you guys think of this. Let me know whether you guys think that I am nitpicking. I don't want to bring any, like, young, successful female YouTubers down. That's not what I'm about. But I do just want to, you know, take a deep dive into this and really pick this topic apart because it was such a big part of my life for literally like four years. And another interesting thing about this topic is a lot of these YouTubers are extremely relatable because they are really open about their mental health and their mental health struggles. And it's a weird feeling watching YouTubers that you relate to so much yet being so envious of their life, especially like the friendships in their life. I remember being so, so envious of YouTubers that had a lot of friends and would go and do these really cool things with their friends. But maybe I did feel like that because at the time I was consuming this content, I was a very lonely person. And another thing I want to add is, do you guys think it is really bad for your mental health to try and upkeep this aesthetic image? I mean, I think trying to upkeep any image on social media isn't that great for your mental health. The last thing I want to talk about is sort of my journey of, well, my failed journey of when I wanted to become one of these aesthetic YouTubers. I probably tried it between ages 17 to 21, probably. YouTubers like Katia and Mika, they make it look so easy because they are so carefree. Everything about their content is like perfect, like absolutely everything. And I would try my absolute hardest to make perfect content, even down to the background. And every single time it just would not be like theirs and I'd get so fucking frustrated. I tried so hard to emulate their content and even emulate like their vibes. And one thing I very vividly remember, which I'm sure a lot of you guys would maybe remember too, was I tried to do weekly vlogs all the time. Like every month I would try and do a weekly vlog. I think I have one weekly vlog up and I would 
flop because you know these youtubers they're full-time youtubers they have a lot of stuff to do brand events to go to friends to hang out with and when i tried to do these weekly vlogs i was working at starbucks so it wasn't quite the same you know i had to go to work like four times a week and when i would go to see my friends i'd go so do you want to hang out at your house and i think trying to film a weekly vlog really did make me realize that my life just wasn't as cool as theirs and it made me feel like shit <laughs> yeah no that's this video done if you're new here don't forget to subscribe and i will be back on wednesday hopefully for a new video so don't forget to leave some topic suggestions down below and i always read a majority of the comments so i'll definitely take a little note of it on my phone i keep all my video ideas on my phone so yeah i'll see you guys in a few days goodbye Bye.